Some good news, more bad news. Bad news, let's get the bad news out of the way first. We're seventh in the Premier League at the halfway point. I'm not going to panic yet. Good news, Koulibaly's left the building. I've managed to sell him, finally. The Senegalese international has left us for £10 million to go play in Qatar. I wanted more money, but we'll, we'll just take it. And in fact, his sales sets us up quite nicely for the plan for today's episode. We have Manchester United to kick things off, and then... I'm just going to play through the January transfer window and see what happens. There are some players I would quite like to get rid of this window. Asper Quetta, I have a, uh, a bit of beef with. He's upset that I'm touting him to clubs. I really want someone to bid on him. I am scared everyone's going to get upset if I sell him. And similarly, Kovacic is another player who I said I wasn't going to sell. And I kind of want to get rid of. I mean, he feels like he's no longer wanted at the club. That, that concern is correct, you're not wanted here. But as is always the case with Football Manager, the hierarchy matters, morale matters, and I don't want to make influential people too unhappy. It is going to be a balancing act, but first and foremost, maybe I should focus on the first game of today's episode, Manchester United at home. I want revenge after the last game against them. Let's see if we can get it today. Yes, folks, how is it going? Welcome back to episode number four of our Chelsea Let's Play here in the FM24 beta. Thank you for the support on this series so far. If you are enjoying it, go down below the video, leave a like. Just a little bit of a heads up as well that with this series going into next week, there will be an episode up every single day at midday UK time. That is my normal upload slot for the Let's Play series. We will be settling back into that this first kind of few days of the beta. I've just been putting out videos wherever because I'm having too much fun playing this game. The fans I'm actually enjoying my Myself might come as a surprise. Last episode, we beat Man City. Remember that? That was good. Yeah, since then, six games played, one win. Yeah. From the highs of beating Man City 2-1 to the lows of losing to Burnley at home, no less. We took the lead in this game as well. Giroud bullet header into the ground. I was relaxed at halftime. I perhaps shouldn't have been. Maybe I should have got more shouty shouty. In the second half, Burnley under Vincent Company, they came out with a bee in their bonnet. They scored a nice goal there through Jordan. They'd score another goal not long later. There was plenty of time in this game to try and make a response happen in the preceding 20 odd minutes. And yet we just didn't really create anything. I want to sit here and say we were robbed. They FM'd us. You know, it was like the Sheffield United game. It really wasn't. You can see just looking at the stats here, Burnley arguably were the better team. And also in this game, Enzo Fernandez, who hasn't exactly been my best friend in this save game, picked up an injury. Twisted ankle. It's been out for the last few weeks with that. After that defeat in the league, a nice easy game. Away from home against Liverpool in the Carabao Cup. We lost this game 4-2, but we were also leading in this game 2-0. A collapse in the second half. A bit unfortunate, perhaps should have taken more of our chances. You can see, looking at the team here, I did rotate things around a little bit. Conor Gallagher, Loftus-Cheek featuring in this game. But equally, they rotated their team. The thing that really mugs me off about this, Ward Prowse got man of the match. Ward Prowse really has been a thorn in my side for Liverpool. I regret not signing him in the summer, and in fact, he came back to bite us in a few games' time. I'm getting ahead of myself. We drew against Brentford 0-0. It's a clean sheet, I guess. We then beat Bournemouth 4-2. Great result. Joe Gomez with a goal. Mason Mount with a goal. Arda Guller with his first two ever goals in the Premier League. The 18-year-old, of course, signed for over £20 million in the summer. Hasn't featured as much in the first team as perhaps I anticipated, but a really nice finishing off the post there for his first ever senior goal. And like I already mentioned, most recently we took on Liverpool again away from home, this time in the Premier League. 2-2 draw seems great until you realise that James Milner scored in the 94th minute. Now, did we deserve to win this game 2-1? Not really. It would have been really nice to win this game 2-1 though. And with that result there, we languish down in 7th, albeit we do have games in hand on the teams ahead of us. In fact, we've played the fewest amount of games of anyone in the division right now. And when I look ahead to the games this month, following on from the Manchester United game, Crystal Palace, Brighton, Nottingham Forest, games we should be winning, Bournemouth Wolves, Brentford, Burnley as well, ignoring the Tottenham game. These games all feel winnable coming up. We need to turn things around this month. And well, a great way to do that would be in this game against Manchester United. 3-3 free free we drew against them in the first game of the season. Let's see if we can do better at Stamford Bridge. So Ansu Fati, injured again, didn't talk about that. I don't need to worry about his extra £30 million I have to pay Barcelona this year if we get in the Champions League. In spite of the injury, though, he is still improving, so... That's a positive. Enzo Fernandez is injured. Besides that, though, we're in a position where we actually have a pretty full-strength team. No one's really been any good in any good form.
form lately. And as a result, I don't really know what to pick for my team. I say I don't know what to pick for my team. I have picked a team. I've dropped Giroud. I don't want to throw him under the bus. Uh, he's just not been good enough lately. I mean, he scored one goal in his last seven games. And Kai Havertz is going to play at striker. He's got, what, four goals in three games as a striker. Albeit that one of those games was a hat-trick against Newcastle. But... I'm going to give him the nod today. Now, you may have also spotted on the tactic screen, Mario Eke is playing out on the right-hand side. We are changing up the system just a little bit. I've decided to switch from the advanced playmaker in the middle with a winger and an inside forward to two inside forwards on attack. We have lacked a little bit going forward. And the Segundo Volante... I've dialed it down a notch. He's now on support instead of attack as well. I feel like playing a really hyper-attacking system can work well if you're scoring lots of goals. We've not really been doing that. So as a result, just a little bit of a recalibration. 20 minutes into this game, possession's been very 50-50. United arguably had the better of the play. They do have a set piece here as well. Luke Shaw to whip in the cross. It's into the area. Varane heads just over. Rapidly approaching half-time in this game, there has been nothing happening in this game. From a defensive point of view, fantastic. More of this from an offensive point of view. Uh, I want goals. I don't think I'm going to make any changes just yet in this game, but just so you can visualise the changes we've done in terms of the changes in system. The Volante now plays on support. The inside forwards in Madueke and Sterling. I want to get forward a little bit more. I feel like Raheem Sterling, whilst he was playing well as a winger, you can see from his recent form, he really had fallen off. Something needed to change there. And on top of that, I have got rid of the in-possession instruction play out of defence. I feel like when you've won one game in your last six, even though the system was at one point in the season working, it's foolish if you don't change anything. Well, uh, that that's my mindset, at least. Whether or not that's going to hold true through today's episode, I suppose we'll find out. This game here has been a tough one thus far, and it's in Manchester United with possession on this near side. Palestri skips past his man Chilwell, made to look like a mug. Are they going to get the ball into the box? Can we do a bit of defending? And Kunku, nicely read. Raheem Sterling, playing out on this left-hand side as an inside forward, is going to bring the ball away from us with these brand new... Silky dribbling animations in the new match engine. He's cutting inside the number seven. He's gone all on his own. It's a sensational goal. I'm a tactical genius. Maybe he's playing a one-two off the defender. The number seven ghosted inside and tucks it into the bottom corner. Chilwell is on a 6.7. I'm playing Colwell and Gomez at centre-back, you may have noticed. I have kind of come around to the fact that Thiago Silva, age 39, isn't a long-term option. Colwell has a load of potential to fulfil. I'm going to move Badia Chile into centre-back. Colwell is then going to move to wing-back on support. The reason for doing this is Chilwell's been awful. He's also on a booking. Uh, elsewhere in the team, Casado's had a really, really good game so far. Out on the right-hand side, Madueke's been poor. I'm going to bring in Arda Gula. Am I losing my mind? Potentially. He can play out on the right-hand side. I'm a bit worried about his physicals. And Kunku does have a fairly strong left foot and can play out on the right-hand side. You know what? I'm going to move Gula into the middle because I do feel like this centre mid-roll is good for him. I have been experimenting with Nkunku as an attacking midfielder instead of advanced playmaker. But Arda Gula, he is an advanced playmaker through and through. 19 minutes left of this game. Not exactly been a classic so far, but I feel like we've done enough. Manchester United have had that one highlight, the Varane header over the crossbar. From open play, in terms of major goal-scoring opportunities, they've really not created a ton. They do have the higher XG. Neither team's exactly been amazing going forward, but maybe we can make something happen here because Arda Gula is going to play it wide to Raheem Sterling, who has looked sensational in this game. He hits the post and Kunku cuts inside. His shot flashes across the six-yard box. Two great chances there. Okay, Kai Havertz has now tired out their defence. Now we bring in Olivier Giroud. That's the play, I think. Ten minutes left of this game, just anxiously staring at the top left corner, hoping this number's going to get up to 90 and then the game just ends. I want to win this game. I need a win. Please, football manager, there's five minutes of added time. And breathe. Oh my word. That game, not the most convincing, not exactly a classic, but you know what? Sometimes you just need a boring 1-0 win and we really needed that today. We didn't play well. I'm happy with the result. Look how happy everyone is. We're turning around the season now. I can feel it. With that result there, we close the gap on Manchester United to a single point with a game in hand. If we were to win that game in hand and Aston Villa slip up, we would be back in the Champions League spots. There's no need to panic yet. So like I already mentioned, we are going to now turn this into a little bit of a transfer special of sorts. I'm going to kind of recap the next few league games as I navigate through the January transfer window, where... Al Hilal really want Ben Chilwell. 27 years old, he's got, what, 18 months left on his current contract? I am worried he's going to try and run down his deal. Does his agent want to talk about things? He's unhappy at the club. He's unhappy at the club, and I am getting offers of £40 million for him. And he wants to go. 
it's non-negotiable. I'm going to reject it because it's the 2nd of January. Maybe I should be looking at left-backs. If Chilwell was to leave the club, we do already have Cucurella in our ranks, a player who mentally is probably superior. From a defensive point of view, not quite as good. Cucurella, really good at that whole attacking thing. With our team, I feel like defending's maybe slightly more important. And in fact, when it comes to the left-back position, our next option would be either Aspiraqueta or Levi Colwell, who maybe isn't the long-term option at left-back, but with Chilwell's contract running out at the end of next year, if he isn't going to sign a new contract, maybe I could deal with his departure. I am just surveying the left-back market. I mean, Alex Tellez and Malassia are available. Not bad left-backs. Not sure they're exactly what I need. Fran Garcia is an option, but I don't know. In football manager, like wing-backs and full-backs, they're like unicorns, aren't they? You never really find them. And given the fact that Chilwell is an England international who is absolutely incredible... Maybe selling him halfway through the season would be a poor idea. If I get Champions League football, I feel like I can convince him to stay. And even if I can't convince him to stay, I've seen how the Saudi clubs act in this game. They'll just bid on him in the summer anyway. Now, our overall balance hasn't been resolved yet. It is still massively in the, the negative. I'm waiting for, to give Todd a call about that. Transfer budget-wise, there is a little bit of money to spend some cash. Lots of people have asked me, Jack, what happened to the rest of the Kante money? Now, of course, we sold Kante for £80 million. We gave £30 million to Luton. I did pick a club to get that next summer money. That club, Wigan Athletic. Yes, Wigan in League Two, a team that start with a eight points point deduction. I've given some cash to, by which I've loaned Asgard for, well, it says here 45 million. I believe it is going to be 50 million total. All I do know is that if I look at Wigan's club profile here, they've currently got 23 million pounds in the bank. I'm hoping they're going to spend some money in January. Otherwise, this is all very anticlimactic. Now, one player I did do a little inquiry to prior to the Manchester United game is Tammy Abraham. Of course, homegrown at Chelsea, great player, signed for Roma for £34 million, has started this save game injured, is still out for three to five weeks. He's currently transfer listed for £17.5 million. Now, £17.5 million, when you look at his attribute, seems like a bargain. I do then look at his injury history and panic. But if I could get him fit and he avoids getting injured... He could be a really good option to have. In case it isn't apparent by the fact that I did just start Kai Havertz at striker for the previous game, I don't necessarily love our attacking options. Giroud, age 37, he started incredibly. He's not very good anymore. I mean, he was good to begin with, to be clear. Best transfer ever. But when he's not scored for a while, we, we kind of struggle for goals. I mean, our next option is going to be someone like Broya, who, if we look at him, he's a fine player. I do feel like he's a tad underrated in football manager. I mean, compared to Tammy Abraham, he just looks like a small child. Now, I am scouting Tammy. He won't be able to pass a fitness test for the next week or two, but maybe a little bit of food for thought there. By the way, every single week, Arda Gullet is the player with the best training rating in our team. I am trying to bedding more into the first team now because... First team football is going to be vital to his development. You can see how much he's improved here. I think he's going to be such an important player for us in the next few years. We have now got Blackburn in the FA Cup. Lower league opposition should be a good opportunity to rotate the team. Maybe Giroud can get a goal for his confidence. I am just going to do this game as more of a recap. It should be straightforward. I know you were secretly hoping this would now cut to Blackburn scoring. Good news if you didn't want that to happen. We've taken the lead, seven minutes in. Thiago Silva, back post header from a free kick. I think Broya might have heard that I wanted to sell him, or at least I'm thinking about signing Tammy Abraham. Kovacic has got the assist as well. Two players who I'm thinking about letting go this window, linking up to make it 2-0. That is both good and bad. I feel like I'm justified in my desire to sell Aspilqueta. He's on a yellow card and a 6.5 rating against Blackburn. Full-time result here, 4-0 in the end. Giroud scored two back post headers from Enzo Fernandez corners in the second half, but to be honest, the game was always in control. Happy with the result. Nice to see Bazunu get a clean sheet. Didn't have a load of saves to make, but the saves he needed to make, he did make today, which... That's not happened in a while. So one area of the pitch where I have got a little bit of a conundrum is the centre defensive mid department. I've got players like Loftus-Cheek, very unhappy, Conor Gallagher, very unhappy, and Kovacic, who's not unhappy yet, but I think will be due to lack of first team football. Essentially, I've got too many centre mids. I mean, here is a list of all the players who can play at centre defensive mid or centre mid. You can see how there's a long list and I have tried to divvy out the minutes and give everyone a little bit of time to appease them. It's not really worked out for Conor Gallagher or Loftus-Cheek. I think if I was going to keep one of these two players around, 
I'd probably keep Gallagher just because he is younger and Loftus-Cheek does have issues with injuries. If we compare the two players head-to-head -head here, I'd say Loftus-Cheek probably has the edge on overall ability, but with his wages, with his age, with his injury proneness being a bit of a problem... Might be time to move him on. Apparently Wolves are interested. Maybe £24 million. For a player who's not really playing a lot, that wouldn't be terrible. I'm going to offer him out via the transfer room for £30 million. We should now get a bid from Wolves in spite of the fact I'm offering him out for more. Conor Gallagher has come for a chat. Speaking of the devil, he wants to leave the club at the end of his contract. He's considering running down his contract. He's valued at £45 to £55 million. He's going to run down his contract. I don't really want it to come down to that. Can we talk about this? Sounds good, but you'll forgive me if I wait and see before committing to my future. Right, well, we'll give him more game time. I might also just offer him out to try and sell him. But at least now he's not letting the world know he wants to leave for nothing. According to his agent, no one is going to make a bid. You know, two players are unhappy, but at least Kai Havertz, who's my favourite person at the moment, he no longer has concerns about my team talk. He's forgiven me for throwing water bottles after we bottled it against Manchester United. I got told Wolves were interested. Where are Wolves? Ah, uh, he wants to ask about the asking price. I offered him out for 30 million, he wants to leave for 19. How about 21's my lucky number 21? No offers for Gallagher either. I mean, if neither of them leave, do I try and sell Kovacic? I like Kovacic, but he's valued quite highly, and at 29 years old, he's not great. A little bit of an issue with his injury proneness too. This might make him really, really unhappy. I'm going to just offer him out. He might come crying. I got all excited about two transfer offers in the sidebar. No, it's just for youth players, of which I am selling a few different youth players who are either running down their contracts or just never be good enough. Players like Donnell McNeely, who, let's be honest... No idea why he's here. One player who I have just loaned out is Cassidy. This guy is a good option for us. Not someone who's near the first team right now, but has some potential. Valued quite highly. Keen to see if he can get some regular first team football playing for Lille. Cucurella's out for three to five weeks. Probably another reason not to sell Chilwell this January. Kai, you were happy like two days ago. Now you want a new contract. We can't afford it. That's probably a lie, but he believed it, so it's fine. Loftus-Cheek wants to discuss how I've been treating him over the last few months. I'll piss off. He thinks it's time for him to leave. Yeah, uh, uh, agreed. He's handed in a transfer request. I mean, I was going to transfer list him anyway. Well, no bids for any of our centre mids. And now it's time for an away game against Crystal Palace, who at the moment are down in 13th. They have some pretty good players, though. And that said, I do feel like we should be able to beat them. Casado, unfortunately, has picked up a cold. So as a result, Chalaber is actually going to start defensive mid between Kovacic, Chalaba, Loftus-Cheek, Gallagher. That sounds like a weird poem or something, doesn't it? Chalaba is the best defensive mid option I think we have in our ranks at 24 years old. He, of all the unhappy players, is the one I want to make the most happy. So he's going to get game time here. Fatty has also passed a fitness test. I'm actually going to keep Sterling out on the left, cutting in on his right foot because his weak foot isn't so good. And Su Fatty actually has an okay left foot. So as a result of that, not too uncomfortable having him out on the right-hand side. Giroud's back in the striking position. He got two goals against Blackburn. He's going to score against Crystal Palace now. Throw in on the far side. Crystal Palace have had a really good start to this game. We've been a bit slow to get going. We've got Ayu in the box to watch out for. Nice, confident collection by Dean Henderson between the sticks. Of course, in real life, he plays for this Crystal Palace team. In our little My World world, he plays for us, though. And at the moment, he has been the more active of the goalkeepers in the opening stages of this game. We are halfway through this first half. Not been any super amazing opportunities for either team. That said, could that change here? Chilwell looking to get on the overlap. Has Raheem Sterling down the line? We'll pick out his man. Is he about to get the ball in? He dinks on his weaker foot to Nkunku, who pulls the trigger and scores a sensational volley. When I saw Sterling on the far side thinking about his weak foot not being so good, I thought, is he going to be able to get the ball in? He dinked it on his left foot with confidence, but Nkunku's finish. Oh my word, that is what that goal was all about. 20 yards out, into that bottom corner, take a bow. Five minutes of added time at the end of this first half. Crystal Palace had a fair few injuries in the early stages. Elise to whip the ball in. The crossbar comes to the rescue. That could have been a disastrous goal to concede. And Kunku with a corner. Lays it short to Fatty. Wide to Reese James. And Kunku cutting inside. Lays it across. If we'd finished that there, what a routine it could have been. And Kunku with the ball. Edge of the box. Dinks it. Ansu Fatty's there. Player in the middle. Giroud's there. He finishes it. It's 2-0. 10 minutes into the second half. We double our lead. I do feel like with the dual threat of two inside forwards on attack, they really can help support the target man a 
little bit more, finding themselves in these slightly narrower areas. For assists like that one, Giroud back in goal scoring form. Throwing on the far side. We have looked so good in this game. Could we look even better? Chalaba in the first team today picks out Raheem Sterling. It's 3 0. We are running riot. I mean, look at the match moment. Look at the match momentum. It's been one way traffic. It could get worse. It does get worse. It's for Raheem. Giroud with the assist too. Crystal Palace, I want to say they're trying to provide party pooping activities. They're trying to score a free kick. They've ruined our clean sheet. I'm not going to let that ruin the atmosphere. I'm, I still feel happy. Oh, don't do it again. Bore off. Go away. Headed away. Ward. Henderson, you have to collect that. If that had gone in, I would have been fuming. Mason Mount with the ball. Running down the line. A little bit isolated. Reese James in no man's land. Oh, my word. Gomez is Mr. Header. Mateta's through. Could he get a second goal back? There's nine minutes left. I don't need to panic. It's fine. Definitely not panicking. Uh, just changing the wing backs to be on defend. Not panicking though. Okay, a little bit of a scare here, but with five minutes of added time, no further highlights. Please, football manager, we're going to win this game 4-2. It could have been more emphatic, but you know what? It's another win. Three in a row all of a sudden. Feeling good. With that result, we do go ahead of Aston Villa into fifth place. They do have a game in hand, but we are slowly but surely reeling in Arsenal. Towards the top of the table as well, Liverpool currently ahead of Man City, albeit only by three points. Raheem Sterling, two goals, one assist. The decision to play him out on the left-hand side last minute. A sensible one. So looking at our schedule, we have been drawn against Nottingham Forest in the FA Cup. They've added another game in January. I am also conscious of the fact this episode is already slightly on the longer side. So you know what? We'll do some more transfer bits if we can do. We're going to play Brighton to conclude things today. Against the Seagulls, they're down in 13th, maybe struggling to juggle European football with their league football. But they do have good players. Going to need to be at our best. Trevor Chalaber no longer concerned about his playing time. Happy days. This could backfire spectacularly. I'm going to offer out Aspu Aqueta. I know he's going to cry. I know some people are going to rally behind him. But I'm going to hope that with a few wins in under our belt, any unhappy players are going to look at the form and go, you know what, I trust the manager. I hope so, at least. Of course, if now no one makes a bid, I've made him unhappy for absolutely no reason. Raheem Sterling's out for the four to six weeks. Four to six... Mm. Today's episode was just going too well. No one considers a bid for Loftus-Cheek viable. I'll offer him out for less. I kind of just want him gone now. I am just going to offer Broyer out as well, just to see if there's anyone interested, because if Tammy Abraham's available and I got a bid of £30 million, I feel like it'd be mad not to sell him. I look at him, I just don't think he's a £32 million player. Tammy Abraham's price apparently now is £7.8 Surely that's not it. Sure, surely £7.8 million ain't it. It's not. Why is it telling me that then, game? Why are you lying to me? Although I will say, for the price I think we're going to have to pay for him, it's still an incredible deal. Okay, I've had bids at Asper Quetta. I'm going to hope he will actually accept one of these. Otherwise, he's here for another 18 months, and it's going to be very, very awkward with me and him around one another. Asper Quetta is unhappy that I broke the promise not to sell him. I mean, what's he going to do? Ask to leave the club. Great. So Andre Santos on his way out on loan to Blackburn. He should be able to tear it up in the championship. Need some regular first team football. Hopefully he'll come back better for it. Guller has now twisted his ankle. I have three players all out with twisted ankles at the moment. Do we need to fix the turf at the training ground? Like I know the budget might be a little bit of a problem when it comes to fixing the turf, but this does feel like it should be a priority. Okay, I have finally managed to negotiate a bid with Roma. I was hoping to get him a little bit cheaper, but I guess of him coming back from injury, they view him as more valuable or something either way 25 million pounds for a young english forward who's homegrown at club even if i have got some reservations over his injury history i i think he's great i mean he's exactly what we need tammy wants to talk to us and he wants to be a regular starter when Giroud leaves the club I, I, you know i could actually keep that promise sometimes these suggestions players ask for are unreasonable that one is actually sensible he only wants a three-year deal i want him to sign a four-year deal four oh, it's four and a half four and a half year deal a hundred thousand pounds Hundred thousand pounds, Tammy. Hundred thousand. Hundred thousand, Tammy. Hundred and five. I, I did try to haggle him down. I really did. The Saudi clubs are still talking about Chilwell. Leave him alone. He doesn't want to come. I mean, he does. He does want to leave. To be clear, he does want to leave. 
but you know he doesn't want to. Colwell is now injured for five days to two weeks. That's another player getting sick. It's incredible the amount of injuries I managed to get during this episode, really. Also, what's going on here? Enzo Fernandez and Casado are an international... Where are they? Sorry, they're at the Olympic qualifying tournament. Two of my centre mids are at the Olympic qualifying... That... That's a thing? I mean, with respect to Argentina, really need Enzo Fernandez to make sure they get to an Olympic tournament. And Casado too. I'm actually fuming. I want to be like, well, at least it's only Brighton we're playing. That's still... It's Brighton. They are good. I thought maybe McAllister would be on international duty. Maybe he'd be in the Olympic squad. No, no, he's not. So this is arguably my best 11. Um, yeah, there's a fair few players missing from this selection. We're needing a new midfield. I can't believe I'm saying this. Asper Quetta is actually making the bench. Okay, Madueke's left foot, so we'll move him onto the right and put Fatty on the left. Chalibur and Mount, by the way, coming in in the defensive mid department. Badia Shirley, left centre-back. Colwell got the flu. I was really, really happy with that Crystal Palace performance until the last 10 minutes, and then it felt like the Chelsea of old. I feel like we really struggle at this club to string together a good 90 minutes. Maybe we can do it today. We've got an early chance, perhaps. Giroud, options in the middle. Reese James is one of them, and he scored. Giroud's got another assist there. They are quickly adding up for him. I love it when a set-piece routine comes together. Little throw-in, Ansu Fati to Giroud. You're going to see a late arrive in Reese James, edge of the box, Finds the bomb corner. We've already scored for a one throw in. Why not make it two for two? Chilwell gives it to Nkunku. Chalaba this time edge of the box. He pulls the trigger. He hits the post. Free kick in a wide area. Madueke floating in. Chalaba heads it against the crossbar. Mad scramble in the box. The ball is in the air. Brian just about hang on to get it away. Maybe today's the day that we put in a good performance for the whole 90 minutes. Right now, Brighton yet to have a shot on goal. Have I jinxed this? If I've jinxed this, I'm going to be fuming. It's Danny Welbeck. Matoma's inside. Few players in the box. Could go on his own. Does go on his own. Henderson, lovely save. Two minutes left at the end of this half. There is going to be one last corner to conclude things. Chilwell is over it. Floats it towards the back post. Badia Schille was under it. Dunk gets it away. Madueke, Gomez, pulls the trigger, doubles our lead. That is going to make my halftime team talk easier. I don't know if this is exclusive to my experience with the beta. It does feel like there's lots and lots of long shots that go in. Not that I'm complaining. Joe Gomez, through the traffic, finds the back of the net. Halftime team talk. I'm pleased we've created loads. Everyone's happy. McAllister runs straight into Chalaber, who right now isn't putting a foot wrong, is he, in the defence in mid position. He breaks down the play yet again. And now we look to bring it forward. Madueke, Giroud. Options to his left, options to his right. Picks out Chalaber. He plays it through. Fatty turns his man, tugs it away. It's 3-0 again. I feel like this is more unexpected than the 3-0 scoreline we managed to get against Crystal Palace before conceding late on. We look really good going forward. What a finish, by the way, by Fatty. Sanchez rooted to the spot. I really hope that 3-0 Brighton would just roll on their back, stop trying and just let us have this win. They're still creating stuff. It's Welbeck with the ball. He's bringing it forward. Estupinan tucking inside, plays it back to Danny Welbeck. One-on-one. -on -one. Finds the bottom corner. We're never getting another clean sheet again. I mean, at 3-1, I don't want them to score another like Crystal Palace did. We are on the attack. We are still going forward. Let's get a fourth. Chilwell. Options in the middle. Could go on his own. Doesn't. Falls to Nkunku. He grabs his fourth of the season and our fourth of the game. Okay, and breathe. 4-1 win. Another great result. The tactical changes we've made seem to be resulting in more goals and a bit more solidity at the back. I mean, look at the stats here. What a performance. I just realised as well, I was enjoying myself so much during that game, forgot to make subs. If it works, it works. It's another great result for us. Elsewhere, Aston Villa managed to beat Tottenham. They were the only other team playing on this Sunday. As a result, they do stay ahead of us. But we are now, all of a sudden, only two points behind Arsenal. We're two points ahead of Manchester United. And I don't want to say it prematurely because there's still 16 games left of the season. I think we're going to be playing some kind of European football next year. I still want it to be the Champions League, though. You know what I think would be the dreamy way to end today's episode? Signing Tammy Abraham, which literally has just come through, and getting rid of Asper Quetta. Tammy Abraham, £25 million. I'm signing on the dotted line. Welcome, Tammy. Now, I'm not going to say anything too loudly yet, but we have extensive scouting knowledge of Tammy Abraham, and it's not showing him as injury-prone. So I'm hoping, in spite of his horrific injury history... 
he will actually stay fit for us. I mean, he is still actually recovering from his injury, so he won't be playing right away. There's something about Tammy Abraham's face next to a Chelsea badge that just feels right, isn't there? I do feel like one thing we've lacked this year is just a striker I trust to bring on off the bench to get us goals, and I think Tammy could be the man for that plan. If anyone wants to bid for Loftus-Cheek before the end of the episode, that would be good too. I don't want to give him away, but I am now offering him out for 13 million. I've just spotted it. Axel Pysold has just been recalled from his loan by Luton. So I've not even given Luton all the money for his loan because they've recalled him prematurely. Idiots. No one wants Loftus Cheek. Either I don't get rid of him or next episode he's just gone. Now this feels like a good thing to end the episode with Asper Quetta leaving the club. A player who I've not really made any use of, not getting paid a stupid amount of money, but frankly, he just adds to my rotation woes and I do want to shrink the first team a little bit. So him leaving makes me feel calmer. Although I have now sold him and now everyone is unhappy. I say, I say everyone, Kai Havertz and Mason Mount, who are quite important at the moment, I feel like, to my team. There are a few murmurs of discontent. We shouldn't have sold him. We're owed an explanation. Unfortunately, he wasn't up to the standard to play for this club anymore. They all loved it. They all stood up and clapped. Okay. Disaster averted. Now, whilst I've not quite sold as many players as I thought I was going to sell this episode, I do still feel like there could be some wheeling and dealing come deadline day. If you want to see what transfer business I get up to with the bits of money that we've got in the transfer budget and wage budget, you'll have to come back next time to find out. Speaking of next time, no idea when we're going to come back next time. We might come back in March, or we might come back if we're going on an FA Cup run. I mean, in March, we have our youth intake, an amazing goalkeeper, amazing wingers, two wingers, in fact. My expectations are probably set unreasonably high. Today's episode was something a little bit different. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like on things. Back tomorrow with more Chelsea action. I'll see you guys then. I'm out.